Welcome to this series of videos about uh, ProSum. My name is Alberto Marin and I work uh, for DoSA, which is an Italian company which develops uh, software for structural engineering. In this uh, first video of the series, uh, we will talk about uh, uh, ProSum, defining what it is. Uh, we will talk about uh, the modeling of measure structures with the, the equivalent frame approach and uh, we will see an application of this approach with uh, ProSum. ProSum is a plugin for ProSAP that allows to use uh, with this program the solver SUM2 uh, that is developed at Pavia University by Professor Magenes uh, and uh, Morandi and Manzini. SUM2 solver uh, allows to uh, perform uh, non-linear static analysis, pushover analysis, on uh, meson restructors, uh, reinforced meson restructors, concrete structures, and uh, structures which has uh, elements uh, both in mesory and in concrete. The equivalent frame approach was developed in the 90s by Professor Magenes, uh, with his research in 1996 and in 2000. Uh, it's a simplified model for measuring structures and uh, it uh, um, consists in transform a measuring wall in a series of uh, uh, columns, equivalent columns and beams connected by uh, rigid element and offset uh, which allow to consider the fact that the joint between uh, uh, measuring walls and uh, uh, measure beams are not able to uh, rotate. These uh, studies were converted into a code that now is uh, implemented in ProSAP and allows to study uh, these uh, kind of structures with this uh, approach. For more information about the equivalent frame approach you can refer uh, to the high number of uh, researches uh, and uh, publication uh, available online. This, uh, this approach uh, has uh, some limits. Uh, it is uh, supposed a global behavior of the structure. So if there aren't uh, good connections between uh, orthogonal walls, uh, this approach should not be applied. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, you have to expect a loss of balance uh, due to local mechanism of uh, measuring walls. So in this case, uh, it is necessary to use different approaches uh, as an instance, uh, the kinematic analysis uh, that uh, ProSAP allows uh, to perform. So we can consider a simple structure to show you how ProSAP works. We start opening the program. We activate uh, the ProSAP plugin. We start to model the structure importing a list file with the plan of the structure. This is the list of the layer that are in the DXF file. We select all to import all in the program. And this is the drawing. The first thing we have to do is to set the reference. With this command, set panel reference. We have to choose a material from those uh, present in the archive of the program and uh, to set the thickness of the walls to create the element we open the sum generator with this command create wall we have to click on at the beginning of the wall at the end of the wall and then at the beginning and at the end of all the openings for the openings, we have to set the height of the element uh, under and above the, the windows in this case. It, it's possible also to consider the existence of a ring beam above the measure if necessary. Then when all the data are introduced, we can click on OK to create the wall. This is the panel. So the geometry of the wall. To show the structural elements, uh, we can uh, 
activate this command show some frame in this way we can see the element the equivalent element to structural elements also in solid view so we have the columns and the, the yellow elements that are the rigid links and offset that allow us to consider the deformable part of the structural element in the same the same way we can create the other walls when there is an intersection with an orthogonal wall we suggest to set that point as the end of the wall so to divide the, the wall in two parts the program automatically models uh, the constraint at the base of the of the panel This is a door, so in this case we have to set equal to zero the height of the bottom uh, spender. In case there aren't openings in the wall, we just have to click the beginning of the wall and the end. So we can use the, the command show frame to see the result of our modeling. It's possible to consider the floors to automatically assign to the structure the loads, the dead and live loads of the floor. Also for the floor elements we have a reference, so we have to uh, set if we want to consider a rigid plane the thickness uh, and uh, the material of the membrane element uh, that uh, will, model, will model the rigid plane the load archive with the dead and leave loads of uh, the floor and then the, the direction of the floor, the direction where the floor assigns load to the, the element once the reference is set we can model the floor with these two commands. The first one allows to model just one floor at a time. The second one allows to model all the floors in a plane that is individuated by three points. We click on three nodes of the plane and then the program automatically models the floors. We can save the data. And then we can proceed to the next step. We, we must assign the load to the structure. To go on at the second context, we have to pass this check. The program automatically controls the definition of the finite elements and allow us to control if there are mistakes in our model. In this first video, we consider a very simple structure. In the next one, we will consider uh, more complicated geometry and uh, uh, we will discuss about uh, uh, the solution of uh, some problem that uh, could uh, uh, emerge in uh, the modeling of the real uh, structures, uh, especially in uh, existing measuring structures. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you need uh, commercial information, you can contact us at administrazione at uh, 2 
or if you need a technical support, you can contact us at assistenza at usa.it.